Hi, everybody. Uh, yes, we've got half an hour. Um, hi, everybody. It's Sandy Phillips here, and uh, welcome to the PIN Community Panel. Uh, today, we're going to do structural repair secrets. And uh, just to let you know, um, just so we, we try and get this done as smoothly as possible, we've got a little glitch somewhere along the line. Um, Ian can't hear any of us apart from Andy. So um, I'm going to sort of hand it over to Andy Quinn uh, just to introduce the panel. And um, he's going to have to do most of the talking because, uh, well, that's what he's good at anyway. So uh, he's the only one that can, can uh, talk to Ian. So I'm going to hand it over to you, Andy. Cool. Uh, thanks, Andy. It's the Two Andy Show. Um, so Ian Newman can hear me. Put a thumbs up if you can hear me. And so can Neil. So it looks like I'm hosting. Cool. Which is what an Andy Phillips can. Um, so welcome to P Community. We, we're going to have some fun. Um, and, and I wanted to bring these two guys on. For, for a lot of you will know, I host the Birmingham NEC PIN with Mary, my partner. I work for Mary, is what I say. Um, and we've been running that for nearly two years. And these guys are great, loyal, uh, active helpers within the PIN team. Um, and Mary specifically is um, specific in choosing her PIN team um because it is all about team it's all about leveraging time we know that as investors because it's about having a power team um but they're also pretty good um i'm going to introduce Ian. um the interesting thing is if he speaks you can still hear him can't you andy um okay yeah so yeah. He, yeah if we've got any other line they'll have to tell us we're having a bit of tech issues which is great to see because i'm based in southern spain and for the last few weeks it's been me that's having the internet problems um Ian is a friend and a, and a coaching client of mine. I've been working with him for seven years on growing his building company. And in that time, he's also invested and come through Mastermind. Um, and one of the few people I know that I would call, um, not an honest builder, but, but a builder who knows his stuff with very high values, not just a quality of work, but customer service and delivery. But he's also found an incredible niche within structural repair. And I'll get him to explain that. And then, and then Neil, um, some of you have seen Neil on these before, uh, used to be a professional golfer, now, now an amateur, <laughs> maybe. Um, so but he's done some incredible stuff in the last few years in property, and especially around getting valuations. And I know I've picked his brain. So the two, I think, are synergistic in, in what Ian can talk about, what he can get, and, and how you might be able to look at properties needing structural repair, the impact that has on valuations. So, Ian, do you, do you want to touch on a little bit about, I want to say how you came into, and we'll, we'll just make it a sort of Q&A thing, um, but what you do niche-wise with structural repair, what that means, and, and just, you know, some tips and ideas that, that help people sort of get their head around it, because I think I do a lot within LinkedIn, and, and, and Andy does a lot within social media. There's a lot of smoke and mirrors around that. There's a lot of people with the wrong perception. have got all sorts of perceptions about stuff. And I think it's the same with builders. We know it's difficult to find great quality builders. But also, because I protect you as, as my coaching client, um, want you to, um, you, you really want to be involved with people in the niche. I don't want to get involved with people about um, general social media. I want to get involved with property investors around LinkedIn uh, in the same way you want to get involved with people around structural repair. So do you want, do you want to explain how that's sort of come about and, and why it's such a great niche for you? Yes, yeah, yeah. Hi, everybody. Um, so, yeah, we started off doing insurance repairs about about 15 years ago. Um, and when we, when we did that, they, we had to do, um, qualify to get Helifix approved. Helifix is one of the leading manufacturers of structural ties in the UK. Um, so, yeah, carried on doing that pretty much. We've moved away from some of the insurance work now, but um, we, we just specialise in the structural repairs. Been doing that for 10 years. Um, and, the, and the great thing about it is we can design structural repairs on masonry, underpinning and piling and get these um, underwritten with a 10-year warranty from Helifix. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much what we do, really. So explain what sort of, stru what sort of structural repair means, because I, I know when I got into in investing, I remember thinking, I remember going around Mary's house with Simon Zucci. And Mary and I were looking to buy a house together and Zucci came around, he was going to buy it and he brought his build around and they're having conversations about turning it into a HMO and where they're going to put shower rooms and whatever. And I remember thinking, geez, there's no way I could understand this conversation to be able to trust to talk to a builder. You know, if a builder come out with something, I wouldn't get it. 
a few months later, we did, and, and that's the learning for you. Once you do a deal, you sort of it's easier. So, what, what does structural repair mean? What sort of things do you see? And you've come through Mastermind. You invest. Talk about some of the deals that you found and and why and, and what some of the you know vendors and also the impact on on buyers with it. What does it mean? I suppose typically there's there's, there's certain types of structural repairs. So there's there's masonry defects, which is cracking within brickwork. There's subsidence, and then there's settlement. So um, sub, subsidence and settlement are very similar in as much as settlement is subsidence that happened after after the project was built or, or can happen ongoing if there's a crack drain or something. So it washes away the strata underneath the building, which allows the building to sink and compress. Um, subsidence is something that's continual, really. It's continuing to move. So that is ground movement. And then masonry defects are usually cracking within defects. So the great thing with structural repairs in, in the property environment is that you'll see cracking in the masonry and straight away a lot of uneducated people will, will take a guess at that and say this property is suffering from structural repairs. That's uh, sorry, from, sorry, from subsidence, which actually it isn't. It's actually a masonry defect. So the perception is it's going to cost tens of thousands of pounds when sometimes it doesn't actually. It's, it's just um, a lack of lateral restraint where brickwork is strong in compressive force, which is downwards force and not in lateral, which means that buildings move outwards like that, which allows the buildings to then crack. I oh, that, that makes sense to me. Um, except I would. What was the word you used? Subsidence, subsidence. I think I was saying. Yes, yeah. uh, that's, where, that's where it's moving. Hey, for those in the West Midlands, and we're we're in around Birmingham. Merry Hill was built on a big quarry, and we called it the Sinking Village um, for that reason. And it affects house prices, doesn't it? And and so if people are seeing cracks in walls, I guess what you're saying is the investor might look at it and go, "Oh, that looks risky, and it looks like a lot of work. I'm I'm probably not going to buy it." Um, yeah. And I guess what you're also saying is that um, if, a, if a Joe Public vendor, a buyer comes around, um, they might be turned off from buying it. So the vendor might struggle to sell. And, and if it's, even if it's been identified through surveys as having um, structural defects in the, in the masonry, in the brickwork, that the vendor might still struggle to sell it by declaring it to, to Joe Public buyers. Whereas what you're saying is it may not be as serious as it looks. And, and even if it is, you know how to sort it and you know how to, you know, how, you know the sort of cost of it. Because you've got deals from people like that before. Haven't you? Yeah, so I got, I got, I came across a property in Worcester um, where the vendor had put it on one of these sell my uh, house quickly websites. It'd been on there for six months, couldn't sell it. Um, everybody that looked at it thought it had subsidence. Um, so I went out, they, they'd actually instructed me through um helifix they got my number from helifix asking us to come out and do the repairs um so i went out and had a look it was, it was an elderly couple um went through their options with them and whilst i was there you know the house was you know your typical tired house i hadn't had any money spent on it for about 30 years um they were very worried and concerned obviously about the structural repairs and i said well it to be honest they're quite minimal in regards to to what the other refurb that needs doing at the property so uh, we spoke about doing a JV together or vendor finance. Um, that didn't work for them. So I then made them an offer on the property, um, which was literally that just the, the, the asking price, less the refurb cost and the structural repairs. Uh, and then work with them over a six month period. They give me a license to get access to the property whilst we dealt with the structural issues, which were, again, it was an ongoing subsidence claim with the next door neighbor's property where it had been where it had been repaired 10 years ago it wasn't actually continuing to subside what they hadn't done is they hadn't tied the building in again laterally so it was pulling away slightly so they monitored that over six months um whilst we had access to the property to do the refurb and then obviously once we finished we did all the structural repair offer offer a warranty on that for 10 years uh, and then completed Pretty much after we'd done the uh, the refurb, the total refill with the project, so it was a good deal for us, really. And you bought that to keep as, a, as an investment. Yes, yeah, yeah, still in my portfolio. And, and, and it sounds like neighbouring neighbouring properties and tying stuff together. How much was the structural repair, and how much was the refurb? On that job, the structural repair was about five grand. So uh, the refurb, the refurb was about yeah, really. forty-five. So really, in the scheme of it. And, and, and Neil, I want, I want your opinion on this. 
Um, the scheme of it, it was negligible cost compared to refurb. And a lot of us understand refurb, you know, we, we know what it is. Um, painting, decorating, maybe shifting a bit around and stuff. Um, and yet the perception was the structural repair was the big issue. Neil, why, why would that have been um, when they've obviously got it on the market? Where, where, where it's only five grand. Would that have would that have shown up in a valuation? Why why was it well? First question, I guess, Ian, back to you. Why was it such a big issue in in their mind? You said they got it on a website. Would... I, I think it's because it's the unknown that they had a couple of insurance surveyors come out and have a look at it, uh, and because no one could give them a definitive answer, it was it was an unknown to them. So um, again, because. Yeah, so they were just worried that it was it was never going to sell, and I think lots of other people that were looking at it took that same view. Really, that, that I think their concern was buying it and not being able to refinance it or sell it afterwards. So it was more the surveyor's opinions rather than a specialist structural repair engineer and builder like you. Cool. And and Neil, have you have you had experiences of where this will impact on valuations or sales, or where you could use it to your advantage as well? I have I've had limited experience on this, but I have had first hand experience on one of our own deals actually. And I don't I met Ian uh just a couple of months prior, which is quite handy because I had <laughs> had his phone number. So I was able to call in about this deal. But it was a property which had had a variety of issues, but one of the issues was there were some cracks in the brickwork and there were some monitoring pins, presumably from a previous insurance claim. And it was putting a lot of people off from buying it. And in terms of being able to get mortgages on those types of deals, it's a bit harder as well. But because we use bridging finance and we've got a good mortgage broker who's able to direct us to the appropriate lender, it was absolutely fine. We just had to have a few additional reports done. So we had a structural engineer's report and we had a drainage survey. And it turns out that um, most of the issues and, and any movement was historic and it had been caused from crack drainage so it was a very very easy fix actually just once you've got the drainage reports you can see exactly the direction the drains go you can see where the issue is and it's a really quick fix like they took two days to to replace the drains very minimal cost but um, you know it's such a great way to buy below market value on on that particular deal and then in terms of getting the property revalued after you've done the works, um, I would say it's really important to um, keep good records of any of the repairs that you've made. So lots of photos, lots of before photos, during photos and after photos, just evidencing the fact that you've made those repairs. We then had a, a structural report done after we'd done the repairs and we'd had a further drainage survey done after the repairs as well. Again, just to evidence the fact that the repairs have been made. And then obviously it's really important that your insurer is notified as well and, and that you've got the appropriate insurance. Um, so all of that is actually very simple. It's slightly time consuming in a way. So it does take slightly longer to buy a property if you're having to wait on these reports. And when you're trying to refinance as well, you, you might have to wait, you know, a week or two to get these additional reports done. But it, you're hardly competing against anyone because most people get put off by any types of works to a property, or any types of external works to a property. People are comfortable with um, doing a refurb internally. But as soon as you start having to do stuff outside, it's a bit of the unknown. It puts a lot of investors off puts a lot of investors who are trying to buy with a mortgage off because they're worried they might not be able to obtain a mortgage on that type of property. So it's a great opportunity for you to, to get the property at a good price. And, you know, you can reassure the owner that you, you're working with good bridging lenders who are, you know, not going to cause a big scene about any of these, these issues and, and that you'll be able to complete on the purchase and go in and, and rectify them. Could you cool. ask, uh, Andy, could you oh. ask Ian, um, uh, well, and um, actually uh, any of you guys, about the sort of the mortgage implications of this, the finance in implications of property that is, uh, has got things like subsidence or any structural issues? Do you know the answer to that, Neil? Have you got a comment on that? So, from, from, yeah, from our own experience, we just had to have the reports. We had to have quotes 
shown how much it would cost to rectify the, the works. And then we just had a condition because we were going to then refinance with the same bridging lender. We just had a condition that we'd have to have actually rectified those works and evidence that. Um, so it was just, it took more time more than anything. But as a percentage, like Ian's example, as a percentage of your overall refurb, it was, it was very small. It was maybe 10% of the overall cost of the full refurb. Um, but, you know, it just put off so many investors. So it was really great, great opportunity to, to buy those types of properties. Cool. And, and you said it was opportunity for BMV below market value. The example Ian gave, he said, well, I, I just I just took off the asking price, the cost of the refurb, the cost of the structural repair. So I offered the market value, really. Did, have you, the example you've got, or have you, have you come across instances where, you, where that gives you a leverage to it below? I think below so basically, if you if you are using any type of finance on the property, like a mortgage or, or a bridging, the vendor might be a bit wary because they, they would be after a cash buyer where they know that the surveyor is not going to cause issues with the valuation of the property. So I think it's really important if you're using any type of finance to purchase the cost that you can really reassure the, the vendor that you're able to proceed even with the bridging lender and that you're able to rectify the, the, the issues. Uh, in fact, we bought another property recently which had previous historic subsidence as well. Uh, and the vendor was very nervous, even though she'd had it all repaired, had all the insurance for the repairs and everything. She was very reluctant about selling it to you know, selling it on the market. She was worried what, what would happen with the valuation. So I think the important thing is, is as long as you've got the right people around you, uh, people like Ian, for example, who can really iron out exactly what needs to be uh, done to rectify the issue. Um, there aren't any issues really. You just you just need to be able to work with the vendor and, and relay that across to the vendor. And, and I guess what you've got is, is certainty. You know, this this is where when when investors listen to this and keep an open mind is it's about understanding that the, the issue is in the mind of the vendor whether it's true or not. In the same way I used to think years ago, why on earth would a HMO landlord do a rent to rent with you? And, and yet of course they do. Um, and, and why would they why yeah why would they want to sell an existing cash flow in HMO? There's all sorts of reasons. So it's, so it's in the mind of the vendor and I guess what you're saying is you can give them peace of mind to say, I understand it. I can move quickly, I can move, I can get this done. It isn't going to it doesn't matter about valuations. It doesn't matter that you've already had it done, what might happen in the future. I know the process that we can follow this with. Therefore, you might get a better deal because you can give them certainty that most people really can't that they're walking away from. Now, Ian, you can put your hand up if you like. I'm, I'm presuming that Ian can't cope, from what I know about him and his business, he can't cope with a million inquiries of people out there looking at properties that look like they've got structural problems. So other than Ian, um, if you come across something where you can see cracks and you can see stuff, what, what's the process when you said it's about just speaking to people, working with people that understand it? Is that, is that other builders? Is that valuers? What, you, you rang Ian, but what else would you do next time, Ian? Um, so it's really important to have a few people available to contact. So let's assume we can't get hold of Ian because he's, he's too busy with work. Uh, it's important that you've got a structural surveyor on hand because any lender, any bridging lender will insist on a structural report. Um, so it's good if you've got a structural engineer and also people that do drainage surveys. And my advice would be to avoid the the big chains that advertise a lot uh, online because uh, you know you, you end up paying a premium for that. So if you can get some recommendations, estate agents tend to have these. I think we've lost Ian potentially there. Uh, estate agents tend to have. Or whether he's put his camera on mute because he's picking his nose, but I hope he's coming back because I've got another question to ask him in a second. <laughs> so I'm saying estate agents quite often have um, people that they can they can recommend. So. If you've got good relationships with estate agents, start to build these additional relationships and, and have all these people available to be contacted. Um, and now, actually, we, we sometimes even have drainage reports done on properties without any signs of any cracking or, or any subsidence issues. It's just, just good, good to have, particularly if we're planning to extend the property in the future. You know, we've already got, got the drainage surveys done. I, I think there's, I mean, when, I've, when I first understood that what the sort of deals near, near Ian was getting, you know, he's getting sent out by 
the structural company to go and fix structural jobs. And then he was talking to the vendors and, and getting all sorts of opportunities. And I thought it was exciting because you've got something here that people don't understand that they're scared of. And yet, if you understand it, you, you've got a deal there, whether it's a deal that others won't have, um, that there's a deal there. So Ian, what, what, what are the sort of obvious things you might see when looking at a property um, to, to know that, may, that you can talk to the vendor about that they might be worried about? They may, they may tell you. What, what, what things stand out for you? Because I know you've talked about it when you've spoken at PINs, and I know when we've been and looked at properties together. What are some of the obvious things that Joe Public may not know that stand out for you where you think there's an opportunity here? Because they may think it's big, but it may not be as big because you can sort it. And when I said Ian doesn't want millions of jobs, he wants the bigger ones. Not necessarily the five grand ones, he might want the 20 grand or the 50 grand ones. Um, what, what, what are some simple things that can help people listening to this? see where there's an opportunity. I'm presuming you can still hear me. I can't hear anybody. You can't hear me. <laughs> You're not hearing me at all. No. Oh, well, you can't answer the question. Can you hear me? Yeah. 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 So what can, is it? Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. I, can't, I can't. I've lost, I've lost all audio. Right. Might be right. better to go out and come back in again. Can... Um... Okay, and back in again. Yeah, let's see. Um, not that we've got lots of uh, lots of time. So, I, on, while man. Ian's getting himself sorted, I can just talk a little bit about um, about the valuation side of things. So, when you're trying to add value, can't hear everybody. Um, when you're trying to add value to a property, it's really important to show as much disparity between the before and after as possible. And structural repairs are, are huge, really, there if, when you're trying to add value. If you can demonstrate that you've made the property structurally sound, the general feeling is that it's a very expensive and difficult thing to do, where in reality it actually doesn't cost that much. But if you've done it, it's a really great way then to display that you've added the value. So as I said before, you have to have lots of before and after photos anyway in your valuation packs when you're looking to add value. Um, but particularly on, on the structural element, if, you've, if you can really, really document uh, all of those things, make sure you keep all of the certificates as well that you get from your trades to show that they've been rectified so that you can demonstrate that to your insurers. And then also be proactive when you're coming to, to refinance the property. Just, just know that these additional reports do take time to, to obtain, so get, start to get them booked in sooner you know don't wait until you're trying to refinance the property and have all these further further reports done you know be be proactive get that scheduled in early into your call and ian i know if he does work he he ensure he his work is insured for 10 years i believe he, he'll correct me if he can hear me but i believe his work's in, insured for up to 10 years is that ian can you hear that no, no. Are you back now? Yes. Yeah, yeah. All right, perfect. Really? Can you just talk a bit about the insurance side, please, Ian, how, how it works once you've you've fixed the problem? Yes, so ideally, in most circumstances, um, people would engage with a structural engineer to begin with. So the, the engineer would then undertake a site investigation. That then makes my life and Helifix's life a hell of a lot easier because you've had somebody that's gone out there and monitored it over a period of time. Um, and give you some background knowledge to what their thoughts are on, on what's caused that defect. Then we, then I would go in. I would survey the property. I would put a repair detail together. I would send that to Helifix. Their lead engineers then at Helifix would have a look at our design. They may tweak it, add things, move things slightly, and then they will underwrite that um, that design then and indemnify the repairs for the value of the, for the value of the works. And I just have to state that's the only only the helifix element of the work because again so sometimes we might do some building repairs if they fall outside the scheme of the structural repairs they would be covered um and then that's underwritten by the cpa so um should anything ever happen to helifix then you, your warranty is then covered by the cpa as well cpa the consumer, protection act. The consumer protection act yeah. Yeah. perfect i did say before you or when you couldn't hear me 
what give us two or three things that investors look into this that you tap in just curious. Maybe I'll turn my volume down with definitely. <laughs> it's, it's like herding cats, isn't it? Hey? Give us two or three things that people listening could notice when they're viewing properties where it might give them a hint as to where, where there's a deal. Um, so I suppose it's cracking above. I suppose it's cracking above windows. Um, a, a lot of the time, that there's, there's cracking above windows that people put down to subsidence. But again, it's not. It's it's usually lack of lintels or lintel failure. Um, bul bulging walls or bowing walls. Uh, quite an inherent defect in this country is a lack of wall ties. So again, if, if the wall, if the two leaves of brickwork aren't tied together, they can bulge and bow outwards. Um, and then any cracking that passes down through through below ground level, again, that would be where your subsidence comes in. Uh, subsidence comes in. Um, so then, yeah, they're, they're going to be the, the bigger repair jobs are, are for subsidence or for anything that needs micropiling or ground grounding. Cool. Yeah, and then, yeah, what's, what would the cost be of underpinning a property? Um, say it's a standard mid terrace property with a just like a four bed mid terrace property. What, what kind of ballpark figures would we be looking at for for the repair work? Guess you didn't want to answer that, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think what we've we've uh, we, we've got a, a hell of a lot out of this so far, even though we had some some gremlins and things like that. And I think what we do is we're 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 going to do another one of these very soon. Um, and we're pretty much on time anyway. We're about half hour half, uh, half hour in. Um, so why don't we call it a day on this one? Because we need to get Ian back. Um, just as, and and we'll make sure he's uh, his technical is a bit a uh, bit better when we've got when we've got that. Um, but we'll do that again. So we, we'll book another one of these because uh, there's, there's loads and loads of questions. I mean, one of the things that, uh, you know, I, I I think is really valuable here and what sort of come out is that uh, there's loads of people out there who uh, the general public, when they go and see a property, if there's any hint of any subsidence, any hint of any structural structural work, they run a mile. Most people, when they see these properties, they literally run a mile. They will not touch them because they, they haven't got the skill set to understand that things can be repaired and they can be guaranteed and everything will be okay. Because it's like once it's like once uh, um, a property's got some structural damage, the old the old adage is it's always got structural damage. You know, it's always gonna be it's always gonna be a bit bit weird. Um well so we know that isn't the case because we know that you know you can build, you can rebuild things, you can underpin property, you can do loads and loads of things. So but the, the interesting thing is that there's gonna be a lot of um investors that go to see properties that have got some sort of structural damage, and because they've got the same mindset, they're out of there as well. Absolutely. So so what tends to happen is there's only a small amount of people who are actually going to go, do you know what? I reckon I could do a job with this. I can, I can do this. And, that, and that's what I was sort of saying, really, is um, I think a, there's a common thing around. It, it comes back to getting a power team, doesn't it? And it comes back to working with a builder that you know and can trust and is good. And, and I've probably done Ian a bit of misservice. And just be careful if there's thousands of people from all around the country wanting to contact him. He, he's brilliant and, and he will take the time. You got to be mindful of his time. If you've got a genuine inquiry like Neil had a genuine deal where he was going to look to progress the deal and look to do the works, but you're so right, Andy, because investors don't have the amount of investors come to me and go, "I, I don't know what to do here," or "This has fallen over," and I go, "What? It, the builder's gone offside. The builder's let me down. The builder, the builder, the builder." Um, and it just comes back to that. And within that, this is a niche. Most people don't understand building. I don't understand pile driving and structural repair. When I went on around to look at a property with Ian, he showed me the crack. I didn't know what a lintel was. It's a bit underneath the window that holds the window in, apparently. I think I'm right. And he showed me some cracks, and he shows you where the wall, where the wall bows. And I go, yeah, that looks scary. I might not have even noticed that on a visit. Now you've pointed it out for me. Um, that's scary. And he went, no, it's not a big job to fix. And, and both these guys, Ian and Neil, have talked about jobs that are less than the refurb, that are five grand here and, and, and ten grand here. It's, it's not massive in a deal. And, and will a vendor easily knock that off? Um, and, and will they knock more off? Who, who knows? But 
whether, whether they not more often you get a you get a BMV deal or whether they'll just sell you at the you know less the cost of repair and you've got a great deal that stacks up that no one else would touch and and, and so there is great opportunity you've only got to understand a little bit and then have someone like Neil uh, and, and Ian and, and the, you talk about the structural engineers that you can hook up with and and this you're right it's it's I think it's, there's a lot of opportunity to be going around looking for, for deals that go for those. It's, it's a bit like um, Simon talks about, and, and I know it was on my mastermind too, the guy who bought the smelly house. You know, he teaches to go buy smelly houses. I actually turn that one down. And it was a guy on mastermind, I forgot his name, I was a script, and he stood there and said, I've been to look at the house. And as he explained it, I got it and went, it was this one here. I said, yeah, it's smelly. He said, yeah, I bought it. And I, and I didn't uh, because I just thought, oh, it's going to be too much work. And it wasn't. It was a great deal for it. Structural repair properties are, are similar, you know. I mean, people don't want them. People, people don't understand. And, and you don't need to know a lot. So I think for me, what's come out of this is you've got to create your power team more. You've got to hook up with a structural engineer or a structural repair builder like Ian um, and, and, you know, and connect with him because he's ex-masterminder. He's, he's actively investing. Um and, and, and they are there to be had. So, um, Brilliant. and well, I think if you run it again and you want Ian back on, maybe yeah, just ask the list what sort of questions do they have, um, and we'll fire those at, at Ian first. He's just yeah. sent me a WhatsApp message. Sorry for the technical issues, just my luck were his words. Um, no worries, no worries. We'll get we'll get Ian back. Um, he's a great resource, and uh, we'll actually put this little this little power team back together, and uh, and uh, and you know get another one up and running. We'll we'll get that sorted out, and we'll let people know about it because I think this is an, an incredibly interesting area. Because it, as I say, most people most investors wouldn't go down this road. They wouldn't touch these properties. So if we can if we can find a fantastic deal, but it's got a bit of structural that we need to have a look at. To have to find uh, you know a, a decent builder that knows what they're doing, and to give us a price and see if that that actually fits into the the equation, I think that's a that's a great way of coming. So, really looking forward to that. Here's a thing for listeners, actually, because if you're nationwide, um, Ian's referred to Helifix, which is one of the few manufacturers and suppliers of the, the sort of materials. So you can, you contact Ian, and if you're on the other side of the country, he'll get onto Helifix and find get a, get you a referral of, of somewhere close that you can talk to. And, and there's a bit of quality check there, you know. And and if the job's big enough and it's worth him, he, 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 that's his niche, structural repair, yeah. traveling around the country, sorting out properties like that. So Brilliant. Cool. Thanks, it's Andy. And thanks for taking the time out of your, your busy day. Um, it's good to see you online. Hey, thank you. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thanks, Neil. Thanks. Thanks, Andy. Um, now, what we've got, um, just, to, just to let you know what's happening uh, on Thursday, we've got to meet the host. We did uh, we did you, Andy, last, last week. We did. Yeah. I'm glad I'm glad I lead and, and, and little pie man, and I'll call him that online because I know him well. We were drinking Guinness at Strategy Implementation Live. If you can understand what what he's saying with his Northern Irish accent, you, you have a great time. He's an awesome guy. Yeah, I'm so I'm looking for, I'm looking forward to speaking to Phil. Um, so Cheltenham Gloucester Pin host uh, we're gonna have a chat and just find out a bit his property journey how he became a pin host and all that sort of thing. Um, and then on Friday, um, I'm gonna do a uh, an easy Facebook marketing, um, sort of for 20 minutes, half an hour, just uh, looking at Facebook marketing, looking at sort of actually putting in money into ads and see if that's going to work for people. So we're going to do that next or this Friday coming up. That's going to be at 10 o'clock. So the meet the host with uh, Phil's going to be at 11 o'clock on Thursday morning. And then at 10 o'clock on Friday morning, uh, it's going to be me and my business partner, Josh, we're going to be going through easy Facebook marketing. So that's what's going to happen in the next week. Um, it just leads me to say thank you very much, guys. Uh, sorry about all the glitches. It's uh, always been a bit of a pain when you get on the internet. Everybody's on Netflix and everything like that. Um, but uh, I think this is a really interesting subject. So we'll we'll definitely put another one in and we'll get Ian back and uh, make sure that he's, uh, he's, he's got top-notch quality and top-notch uh, internet. And so we can hear him and he can hear us more importantly because I think that's the most important thing. So anyway, until next time, we'll see you later. Cheers, bye. 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 Bye.